Hey, what is going on guys? A couple of you are wondering how I made 3D logos, well my logo 3D. It's really, really simple, so I thought I'd show you guys how to do it now. But basically you want to take your path of your logo um, in Illustrator. This is your path, it's basic, it's really simple. In Photoshop, if you have a path or you just have a logo, um, I can show you how to make an outline. I'm gonna combine these two and then I'll just move it out of here. To make an outline over here, you just make a selection, uh, go into select, right click, and then say make work path, and then it'll generate a work path um, that way. This one is sometimes inaccurate, as you can see, it's like off the edges and stuff, but that's a really quick way, or you can just draw it yourself. But I'm gonna use this as an example, then you go to file, export, I believe, I haven't done this in this version of, yeah, paths to illustrator, uh, my computer's freezing up. Paths to Illustrator and then work path, okay, and then I'll ask you and then just export it as that and I'll export it as an Illustrator um, Illustrator lines. Now in Illustrator you can simply you go to save as and then I'm just gonna put an SSSS and desktop and then you want to save it as a Illustrator 8 file. This is the only way that'll work in Cinema 4D. We're using we're going to be using Cinema 4D and it's very basic stuff, so you can download Cinema 4D or almost, you can download these all these programs I have anyway, so it's not like it's an issue of having Cinema 4D. Then I'm going to use those work parts over here. I think I actually have, I have a saved version of Michael's work path, Michael remake, there we go. I have his um, exported in already. Um, that's a more accurate version, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. You just take your, the, this is the one that I exported um, out of Illustrator, and then just drag it in, click OK, and that's the wrong one. Yeah, yeah, this is the right one. And then you have your work path. This just was hidden, it was hidden in here, that's why you can't see it. There it is. Um, so I'm just going to close these, I don't need this anymore, and I also don't need Photoshop. Uh, I'll close that as well. Uh, my PC is really slow today. It's been slow this recently. I don't know why. I think it's my dad. Um, so that's how you get your parts. If you want these to be to be together, you just go. You just select them both. Um, why aren't they selecting? Right click, connect objects plus delete. You just drag it out, and then you will have your path like that. But today I'm going to use Michael's one instead, which is actually saved. My bad. User objects. Michael remake. And then first thing you want to do is you just want to add an extrude. Um, then you put the thing under the extrude. And then I would make this maybe 200-ish, 220. Let's make it 220. Ooh, that's really big. Um, let me actually just do this first. I'm going to make this 1920 by 1080p. You can use whatever resolution you want. 1080. And I'll keep that like that for now. And this seems a bit long. Um, let me try 150. Let's try 120. Let's try 90. Trial and error, boys. 80, 70. I want it to be nice. Okay. Um, then we're going to go to cap, fillet cap, fillet cap here as well. And then I guess five is okay. I want it very, let's make it four. I'm gonna make the filler caps four and then I guess that's all for the first one. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this. Holding down control, you can duplicate it. And then this one we'll just add, we'll just make the caps a bit bigger here. This should be four. And I'll just make the caps maybe like 10, 15, 15. And then I'll make it a lot shorter, maybe 30. And then if I move it in, that's what this is what we're making right now. So it's gonna adjust the caps, maybe to around that size. And right now it looks very dull, but you'll see where it comes into place. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the positions um, there. Yeah, we copy this position, say apply. They should be in the same place. But I actually want this to be centered. So. That seems pretty cool, it seems good. Um, it's gonna make it a bit longer though. Maybe something like that, let's try 50. Um, 
45. I like being accurate, don't judge. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the two and right click group objects and then you have a null and then I'll name this Michael logo. Okay. And then you wanna go right click. Um, I'm actually just gonna save this in case it does crash. Okay. And then we get into the textures. Now, um, I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna make the outer part white and then I'll make the rest blue. So we're gonna have a reflector. We're gonna go um, add legacy reflection. Um, let me actually just take the other ones I have instead of, and then I'll just show you what's inside them. Because those are a lot better. So I have my presets over here. These are called outline. Um, outline, yeah, these two. Outline three. So in these, I have a white color. Um, I actually have a texture, a white texture color. I could just change it there, um, but this is just how I set it up. And then I have a luminance at brightness 15% and max strength, min strength at mix strength at 40%. Low. And it's also, remember this finale, this should be on finale. And then I went to reflectant. And then under here, I have 50% um, uh, reflection brightness. And then under the reflection, I have brightness 25, 60. It's, it's all about filling around in the reflections. It, it depends on how you want it to look. And then I'm just gonna add the white onto the outside and then the blue onto the inside. The only difference in the blue is I just changed the color to blue, so yeah. And then to make the effects, make it look really nice. This is very dull right now. As you can see, it looks really bad. To make it look really nice, um, let me just check these. I'm gonna go to anti-aliasing. I'll make this best. Two times two and four is fine. And then I will add ambient occlusion and global illumination. Ambient occlusion, um, it automatically adds shadows to the edges um, where two objects meet. It automatically adds shadows so you don't have to light, have lights there. I like just having that on. And global illumination is basically objects in the scene that light up. Like if you have a circle with a luminance on it, and then I have a here here and I add this if global illumination is on then basically that will do is it will make this object light up um, the logo instead of having actual lights in there see there's light there's actually lights reflecting off the edge there so that's what global illumination is but I'm not going to use global illumination on this one I'm going to do some to set up a whole lot of lights. You could use three point lighting and all that, but that's a lot to explain in other videos. So I'm just going to use this uh, basic light and then I'll just basically duplicate it everywhere. I'm done. So this is what it will look like. Um, something like that, maybe. Move it to the side. And I want this to be a lot shorter, but a lot wider. Something like that. I don't know why the scene looks really dark right now. Okay, then we're gonna go into type spot. Spot is fine. Then we're gonna go to shadow shadow map soft. That will do. That will do. Um. Ah. Well, that will do is it will have nice shadows and stuff everywhere. And I'm gonna put this centered, and then I'll just duplicate it. Move it to the side a bit. Um. I'm holding down shift to keep these. Um. What you want to do is you want to rotate and you hold down shift and you'll keep it and I'll skip it to angles of 10. So if you want perfect angles like that, I'm just going to move it to the side so you can have some shadows all around the logo. And then I also want that to be a bit angled as well. Maybe 10, 30, something like that. I'll just move it, whoops, I'll just move it away. Something like that, yeah. And then for this Left one, we'll just duplicate, move it to that side. Rotate it all the way around to 180 degrees. And then we'll duplicate it one more time. And this one will go on top. All the way up. There. And 
rooms. Now for your camera angle, this is the one which you will be rendering out as. You just want to get a nice angle basically to which you like and then you just add a camera and you're just going to go into the camera by clicking that and then you want to move this around. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a protection tag. What this does is that if, if I accidentally am in the camera and I don't want to mess up where my camera position is, a protection tag will make sure that my camera doesn't move around accidentally and then it will remind me that I have to go out if I just want to fiddle around and edit stuff instead of messing up my camera. So that's what I would do there. So I'm just going to move out of this quickly. All right. So now I'm just going to do a bit of touching up. Um, the lights are a bit fuzzy. Let me actually do, just see what it looks like in the render. It might take a might take a while with this with these two on. I don't want global animation. So let's go save. See my camera already feels a bit off. Um, this is what it looks like now. There's a bit of reflections, but I want my camera to let me just take the tag off. I want this to be a bit this way and this way. I want a nice angle to it. If this is if this is my logo, I would make my logo a bit um, angled that way. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take Michael logo. And I want this thing to be rotated a bit. Ooh, here's another thing I can show you. Let me just put the tag back on. As over here, as you can see, your axis point is way off the logo. Um, here it's in the center, here it's in the center. You can just go to mesh, axis center, point to center, and then these two execute, and then I'll put it at the center. It's not, it doesn't always work perfectly, but this is what I do. Um, if you don't put points in center on, you want to put this on 1%, I believe. Let me see what it looks like now. Yeah, there it's centered. So I'm just going to do that. So now it's centered. And if I want this to be centered as well, execute center. So now when you rotate it and stuff, it's, it rotates at the center and not off at a weird angle. So now I can go back into the camera. I can take the whole thing. And then I can rotate it at a nice angle so that the light and stuff reflects nicely. Then I'm just going to move it a bit to the left and a bit to the up. A bit up. And let's just see if it's lighted all the way around nicely. Um, I sort of want this top one to go a bit. Um, how can I do this? Let me make this brightness 150. And then I'll go into the camera. Let's see what it looks like in the render. Okay, I guess that looks a bit fine. Um, it, it does look a bit rigid on this on the sides. Yeah, it looks like there's a bit of bump. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into subdivisions and add a, a few, add in a few subdivisions. So it'll take a bit longer to render, but it should look a lot smoother. We'll see how that goes. And I'm just going to add in ambient occlusion as well for the nice shadows. I don't really want, we don't have any self-lit objects in the scene. So global emulation won't do much. And then I'll just let this render out quickly um, and see what it looks like. Another thing, if you want the the background to be transparent instead of black, what you do is you just click alpha channel there and you change it to PNG. So now you, I can go and edit this in Photoshop as well. So I'm just going to give this a name. It'll be Hey Hey Smexels. Render. Okay, so now the render is done. This is what we have. Um, you could... If you have big objects, um, big, if you want it to be high resolution, you could just go and export in high resolution. Then I'm gonna go into Photoshop. And I actually, I'm not gonna show you how I made it look a lot better because that takes a lot of time. And it's gonna take a long time. So I'm just gonna load up a preset. This is what I have with a whole load of um, adjustment layers on. And for the background, I just used I actually use this off another wallpaper, off another channel art. So this background, um, I can't really explain this to you because as you can see, there's a lot of different effects. Um, you'll have to go and learn how to make nice backgrounds and stuff with a lot of gradients. Um, but I just added a few um, adjustment layers. As you can see over here, I have quite a lot of nice presets of adjustment layers and gradient maps and stuff. And I just added a mask onto the logo. I'm actually just going to go and take out the logo to show you how I did it there. It's going to drag this in, put it in that position. I did this for the altitude logo as well. As you can see, the altitude's nice and shiny. 
it's all about your lighting and how you set it up if you want it to look more reflective and stuff. So I just took this, delete that layer mask, and then I just went, I held down Alt and then I just replaced all these other layer masks. Boom. And that's what it, uh, that's how I made it look nice. I'm using this on my channel a lot and my YouTube picture currently. So yeah, that's how you make your logo 3D. I hope you guys enjoyed, have a great day, and I will see you on my next video.